It's an absolute riot doing this episode. I don't think I've ever laughed more in a week than this. We're all having to do every single stereotype that we live and work within every day. Let's act. Uh, Mr. Pendrick. Yes. Right Why would I give the gun to him? It is moving pictures with sound. The talking. And he's doing it like 30 years before it actually comes out. Because it actually happened in around 1927, and this is sort of turn of the century stuff. So he's yet again way ahead of the curve. I'm sorry. Uh, I have to stop you. Uh, a, a real coroner would simply not handle hey, the body in such a... just mind your business. I, I'm just trying to help. Well, uh, did I ask you for your... Stop! Help? Burdock Mysteries is known for taking some creative license, so I think people won't be too offended if we add the advent of sound within motion picture three decades too early. The props master, Craig, does a wonderful job with the, a lot of this Pendrick invention stuff. You have to get that on film. Modern, contemporary, boom, versus, you know, Pendrick's invention. For this episode, we had to come up with period film equipment, cameras. I had to invent the sound gear that we were going to use because it didn't exist. The boom mic and the sound recordist gear came completely out of my head. Again, going with the telephone as the iconic sound reproduction system of the era, I used a telephone-type microphone as the microphone and then created a boom pole out of steel square tubing. Decided to go square because modern boom poles are round. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be amazed. Booger always was full of himself. <laughs> you are the first to witness a new era in filmed entertainment, not only of sight, but sound. The writers decided that rather than have loudspeakers in the theater, everyone had to have a set of headphones. I looked into what headphones looked like, they didn't really exist, and what was speaker technology of the period. And we settled on telephone earpieces. So we have two of those mounted on our, all our characters' ears. Quite a bit of the real film equipment came from my personal collection. I collect old antique movie cameras and just film equipment in general. So the camera, the tripod, a bunch of the editing stuff we have in the editing suite, the projector that we'll see in the projection booth along with the light source, that all came from my house. And then there were things like film lights, which if they existed at the period were really giant carbon arc limelight lamps didn't quite work for us to use in the police station where we had the lights. So I developed a five light, which was five bulbs mounted in reflectors. Some of the equipment is feasible. I mean, the microphone we used probably wouldn't have had a very good range, much like the microphone you're using and that our real boom guys use there developed to be able to record sound from a distance. So in that area, our recording probably wouldn't have worked well. Now. Prepare to be transported to a new world. A world where all your senses are engaged. The late uh, 1800s, people were absolutely stunned when they went to what was called the Toronto Industrial Exhibition in those days. Today we know it as the Canadian National Exhibition. But about, to, let's see, the late 1880s, early 1890s, they came in there with, well, we would call it movies. In those days, people really didn't know what to call it. You went in there and you would see things moving on a screen. And that was just wild. I mean, people went nuts. There was no storyline per se. It was just the, the fact that you could sit and look and, and see things moving. We had numerous theaters in Toronto, and they came about as a result of sound. The upside of talkies, of course, was that it brought in far more people than the, the poor old silence. <laughs> I have to say that was bloody good. Indeed, sir. 